Friends, welcome into another edition of Deportes Nation. Today we find ourselves at Shell Energy Stadium, literally as it's being cleaned up at the conclusion of the CCC, the CONCACAF Champions Cup match between the Houston Dynamo FC and the team from St. Louis, St. Louis City, if I get that right. I'm Alex Parra. Beside me, I turn to my partner in crime, Victor Adaisa. Victor, 1-0 uh, win. It was just enough to continue on in the competition for Houston. Exactly. Something uh, we knew the Houston Dynamo could do. And um, uh, thanks to that 2-1 to they got in St. Louis, uh, the away goal gets them through here. Um, you know, decide, dissect it however you want, but at the end of the day, they get in through to the next round and they'll face the Columbus Crew, another MLS team. Uh, but maybe again, uh, you know, something that favors them is that MLS teams are coming out of preseason right. straight into the start of the season and into this tournament. And I think that's uh, certainly something that played here with St. Louis. Managing minutes, managing games, it's all part of right. being a manager, a head coach in this league. Ben Olsen did that today. Several changes to the lineup relative to the first MLS regular season match. Yeah, and St. Louis had some changes as well. And they're managing uh, some of their stars. They did it in the first game here as well. Um, it just worked out better for Houston. And it, it is a bit, uh, maybe not surprising, yeah. um, but I, I think for fans uh, who were worrying about Rightly so, about all the injuries, right? Like Hector Herrera, Sebastián Ferreira, Nelson Quiñones, uh, you know, mostly on the attacking side, but also, uh, you know, if we go defensively, Franco Escobar was on the injury list up until this game. Ethan Bartlow we hadn't seen up until this game. Uh, Eric Spiachenko wasn't really scheduled to play, he told us, and, and then got some minutes at the end. Um, you wouldn't even notice the way this team's playing. Uh, did enough to get to get the goal and advances and uh, now has a, a game on the weekend against the uh, New Red Bulls. And with a long season, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to manage the situation. You have to keep trying to find a way to get results, be it tied during the regular season or wins, if at all possible. You mentioned Hector Herrera. There was a spotting here of Hector Herrera. Apparently he was here, not on the pitch, not in uniform, but watching his team. Yeah, he's back in Houston. Uh, I think we mentioned that the, uh, the other day. Uh, got his green card just like Amin Basi. So, uh, good news for Dynamo fans and for, for the Dynamo itself because they will count as domestic players. That opens up two international slots uh, for potential signings. We'll see what they do with those. Uh, but yeah, now um, working here locally, uh, rehabbing from, from his injury. Uh, we did see him with a crutch. Uh, but and, and we have heard it's going to take a little bit, yeah. uh, you know, maybe a couple games, a couple months. Uh, but here with the team, I'm sure that has a, a good effect as well, uh, anemically for, for the club. And again, um, the biggest thing for the Dynamo is if they can continue just to hang in there, right, and not dig themselves into a hole, man, when that guy gets back onto the field, uh, that could be a huge plus for this team. Absolutely, a boost, hopefully, when the team would need it. Uh, we're here and the stadium is empty. It wasn't much more full during the match itself. Uh, Victor, I go back to this uh, U.S. Open Cup, uh, CONCACAF Champions uh, cup. It, the stadium just doesn't fill up. Was it the late hour, maybe 9:30 on a Tuesday night, that affected getting uh, Shell Energy full? That may have something to play with it. Uh, obviously, you know, it, it didn't help a lot of the crowd. We did hear the complaints, um, but I thought, you know, this was your regular cup crowd. Yeah. Uh, we've seen this for Open Cup games, similar similar numbers. Uh, I think maybe a crowd that was a little bit more into the game and maybe the elimination factor played into a little bit, uh, more so than the crowd we saw on Saturday night in the opener against Kansas City. Um, again, I think the way the game turned out at the at the final minutes, right, uh, and then the finality that came with the series uh, contributed a lot to that, and, and we'll see where it goes uh, with, the next, with the next game here against the Red Bulls. Well, that's about the game. I, I, we're going to close today, uh, Victor, because a, a, fel a fellow journalist um, from Fox 26, Maggie, um, unfortunately passed away in the last couple of days. It's, it's something that's devastating to us that knew her. She was a shining light. She had a, an amazing personality. Um, I reflect back on the short time I, I knew her. We literally just saw her here days ago, and, and I feel her spirit in, 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 in the stadium. She really was dedicated. It's, 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 it's a devastating loss for many of us. Um, it's going to take time to get over, but we want to certainly praise her, uh, our condolences to her family and her friends, um, and, and we're missing a very important piece of, of soccer reporting in this city. Absolutely. Um, Steve Clark, uh, you know, went out of his way to, to address, um, you know, her passing, uh, mentioned what it meant to him, uh, coverage that she did that, that impacted him, and, uh, you know, 
for somebody who covered the team maybe for 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 a short time, I you know I think last season she kind of really uh, came on and and you know got to witness the Cup final. You know I'm, I'm, I was thinking of that. Uh, we got to see her in Miami. She got to travel with the team and get that experience. Um, you know obviously fans as well. She had a quite a quite an impact. Uh, the the team is going to honor her on Saturday. That's going to be an important moment and. Um, you know, as, as we hear more, I think, well, obviously, like you said, we, we felt her void here tonight in the press box. This would have been a game that she, that she would have been at. Um, and, you know, right over here, this spot uh, last Friday, one of the last trainings before the MLS openers, we you know, got to talk to her among the last time before the game and, you know, mentioned her, uh, you, you know, wanting to give more coverage to the team. And I think, um, you know, that that spirit of, of, you know, maybe that newness of, of covering the team from the start, um, has reinvigorated uh, a lot of us here, uh, here with, with these news, and, and obviously she left a legacy. She leaves an amazing legacy, and ladies and gentlemen, friends, I, I tell you one thing, it's too short. Enjoy every moment. Please don't sweat the little stuff, and, and think of one word, which is love. Uh, we had love for Maggie. We will always love her, and we will miss her. So uh, with that, from Shell Energy Stadium, Victor, I'm Alex. Thank you for joining us on this latest edition of the Portes Nation.